Let's start with the Dubai Open, which is uh, the, Dubai, the Dubai Championships, which is a big, big event uh, for the women. It alternates with Doha as a WTA 1000. So next year, it'll be a 1000 event. This year, it's a WTA 500 event. But let's start with the players that have withdrawn because some big names are pulled out of this one. So we've got Belinda Bencic. She's pulled out. Kerb has pulled out. Conservate, of course, pulled out because she's just played in Russia last night. Uh, Pavlyuchenko has also pulled out. Uh, Pushkov is still out with that injury. Rabakina is out as well. I think she's also injured. And Sakari also pulled out after doing well in Russia last week. So a couple of players have played well last week, but a lot of big, I mean, that's a big list of names who have pulled out. But even so, it's still a stacked event. Let's go to the top of the draw. So here you go. We have Sabalenka, the number one seed. She plays a qualifier in the first round. Winner of that match plays either Kvitova or Georgie in the second round. That is a tough start for Sabalenka, who's had a pretty sketchy season so far, especially with her serve. Uh, then you've got a very big fireworks match between Kennan and Ostapenko. Rackets will fly in that match. A uh, winner of that match takes on another banger first round between Kazakina and the number six seed, Igish Fiontek. Stacked part of the draw, this one. Very, very stacked. We've got, uh, you know, Grand Slam champions all through it with uh, Kvitova, Ostapenko, Kennan, Sviontek, and of course, Sabalenka uh, has been a, a very good Grand Slam player over the last couple of seasons. So massive, massive part of the draw there. Very tough part of the draw at the top. Next section of the draw, we've got Bedosa, number three seed, taking on a qualifier. Winner of that match takes on either Risk or unseeded Simona Halep. Very dangerous player there. Hell of unseated. That just shows how big this event is. Then we've got Goff versus Bagula. Winner of that match is going to take on either Zvonareva or the number eight seed, Jabor. And I feel like we haven't seen Ons Jabor much this season. She pulled out of the Australian Open with injury. I know she played before the Australian Open, but she got COVID at the end of last year. She got injured as well uh, before the Oz Open or during the Oz Open. So Jabor is having, a, is having a tough season. So we'll see how she can do in this one. But again... Uh, this part of the draw takes on the Sabalenka part. It's a stacked tournament throughout. WTA is already random, but man, oh man, this is going to be tough for everyone involved. Bottom half of the draw now, we've got a lucky loser playing against the wildcard Sharif. Now, the lucky loser is there because uh, both Contivate and Sakri pulled out. So there's a bit of a, a, a second chance for someone there. Uh, winner of that match takes on either Mertens or another qualifier or lucky loser in that part of the draw. Uh, then we've got Kudamatova versus Azarenka. Winner of that match takes on either another lucky loser or Muguruza, the number four seed. And Muguruza, over the next couple of weeks, has a lot of points to defend. I think she uh, she either won Dubai or Doha last year. Let me just triple check. She actually she is the defending champion of this tournament. So she's got a lot of points to defend. Uh, and she might drop down the rankings even further because of those uh, lost points. She's going to lose half those points no matter what because... She can only win 500 points this year, whereas last year she won 1,000. So Muguruza is having a tough start of the year because all her points are starting to disappear. Bottom part of the draw now, you've got the first time seeing the Australian Open final is Danielle Collins, number nine seed, taking on a qualifier in the first round. Winner of that match takes on either Svetlina or another qualifier in this part of the draw. Then you've got Bagu versus another qualifier. Winner of that match takes on either... Uh, the wildcard Garcia or the number two seed Krejcikova. So there are so many wild, uh, so many qualifiers and lucky losers because of all the upsets. Uh, sorry, all the uh, withdrawals. Um, Collins uh, and Jabor were supposed to uh, not supposed to be seeded in this event. So they've got promoted thanks to uh, Contabant and Sakri pulling out. But also a lot of lucky losers are getting a chance too and a lot of qualifiers. So it's going to be still a stacked event. But I don't know. I mean, who's in good form? I mean, Sabalenka's not in great form. Maybe Bedosa. Sviontek looks pretty good. She looked great at the Australian Open. So let me know. Uh, let's have a look at the chat for a second. What do you guys reckon? Who do you reckon is going to win that tournament? Um, I'm, I'm thinking maybe Bedosa or Sviontek uh, if we're going with the seeds. Krejcikova, not to be one to, uh, to you know, be overlooked. Maybe Collins. You know, she's doing all right as well uh, the last couple of months. Obviously, Australian Open being great. Uh, and, you know, maybe even Halep. Halep being unseeded. That's dangerous. That is dangerous.